Hey Fred, hope you had a Merry Christmas. Uh, I wanted to ask you about DeMar. Um, what is it that makes him so good at, at getting to the free throw line and what do you guys have to do to keep him off of there tonight? Um, well, I think he's just one of the most skilled guys to play the game. Um, and, and he's grown, obviously as a scorer, he's grown so much. And a big part of scoring now in today's NBA is getting to the foul line. So. Um, he's one of the best at it, and I think, you know, we just got to show him early bodies and show a lot of help and just be smart about reaching in and plugging gaps and, and just knowing, you know, how he likes to draw his foul, stay down on pump fakes. But uh, obviously it's easier said than done, and, you know, there's a reason why, uh, you know, who he is who he is. How much of an art is there to be able to do that for, for guys like DeMar, Harden, guys like that around the league and how much of it can, is that something that can be learned throughout a player's career how much of it is sort of dependent on reputation and stuff like that in terms of earning the whistle uh is that something that like let's say pascal is that something that he needs to get better in terms of being able to draw the foul and get to the line um i think it's a little bit of both i think it's, it's it takes skill to to draw fouls um um for my vantage point it's more about reputation and and like you gotta like you say you gotta earn that so you gotta develop this skill and and do it for a long time years over many seasons and then you develop a reputation refs know what to look for and their, their eyes are trained to to see the bumps your body just gravitates differently your body moves with different bumps and different slaps and so you just you it's a process but um as far as Pascal, I think everybody would like to see him go to the line um, a lot more. I'm not going to sit here and blame that on him. But um, I think that, you know, as his career progresses, I'm sure he'll continue to, to get better at drawing it. And hopefully, you know, the whistle start to go his way more, more and more. Um, but I think there's something you can develop, but there's definitely guys that are good at it. And some of that is, is working at it. And some of that is just um, talent. Thanks, Fred. Appreciate it. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Hey, Fred. Happy holidays, man. Thank you. Um, another DeMar question, if you don't mind. Uh, you you were with him that one year. He had one of the great scoring years in Raptors history. Went off for about 27 a game. And then since then, he's, his scoring has come down a little bit, but his playmaking has really uh, seemed to have grown each year. You saw what he did in opening night. He had nine assists. He's around six assists uh, the last two, three years. Um, how does that add a dimension to his game? And uh, you know what is it, what what do you what do you make of a guy like that who's able to sort of change or grow or develop his game like that? Uh, I mean, you should get a lot of credit for that for being able to adapt and going from a guy, you know, like you said, 27, 28 a game to down what 22, 23 is range now, um, yeah. and getting that assist up there. I think that changed a lot in my second year um, mm -hmm. with, with the way our offense changed and. He, he really made a concerted effort to get more guys involved. And, um, you know, it was surprising, honestly, to see how well he could pass and how well he could play make because up until that point, all I had known of him was just to be a scorer. So um, I think that's helped his game a lot. I think it makes him much more dangerous and um, it makes the team more dangerous when you know that, you know, some guys in the league, you know, you can you can send a lot of help because they're not, they're not going to pass unless they absolutely have to. And, um, DeMar is not one of those guys. He's getting off of it pretty free and easy, and it makes the team, you know, harder to guard. What was he like for you as as a, as a vet when you broke in? Uh, he was great. He was great. He's uh, he's one of those pivotal guys in my career on and off the court. Um, gave a lot of game and wisdom and um, tough love and, and just uh, taught me a lot. And just from watching him, watching him prepare every day, watching him practice every day, watching him work out every day, and then seeing him, perform on a night in, you know, night out basis. He's uh he's really, really, really high on my list. And um, you know, just as a, a friend and guy that I've grown close to over the last few years, uh obviously I got a lot of respect for him. Appreciate it, Fred. Have a great night. Thank you. Hello, Fred. Merry Christmas and I hope the kids got spoiled rotten yesterday morning. Thanks, Doug. Um you know, this is a you know the first road trip and I understand you're gonna stay in San Antonio and then fly to Philly and practice and the schedule sort of screwed up. With, with, you're not going to get home very much in the back-to-back -back games in different cities. Have you guys thought about the impact of that? 
Uh, no, you try not to, Doug. I think you just we just gotta trick ourselves into finding uh, the good and all of this stuff, and um, you know, kind of create our own world where this is the only thing that's going on. And and because the more you pay, you know, attention to what's going on outside, it gets more and more depressing. So I think uh, you just kind of try to lock in and make the best of it, the best we can um, with the traveling. And obviously, this is not super different from what we did before the bubble but obviously there's a lot of restrictions and guidelines and um you land in the city and and there's not a mask to be found so uh some of that stuff will take some getting used to but it is what it is you continue to follow the rules and follow the guidelines and just try to stay safe as possible and, and focus on the work i think that's one thing that's helped me a lot is just really diving into my craft into my work because there's not so much distraction going on in the outside world just you know watching a lot more film working out a lot more um, just focusing on my body. So I think just diving into the work every day, it keeps you distracted from, from the outside world and, and try to go out there and perform at a high level every night and, you know, hope for the best. There will be a lot more solitude time, I presume, where you can't have, in some states, you can't have team dinners and you can't hang around with the other guys on your team. And How weird is that going to be? It'll be a lot of hotel room time, I would presume. Yeah, it's different. I think that's one thing that helped me in the bubble was just, you know, once we were in the bubble, you were safe. So we got we got time to spend spend around each other. You could sit outside and eat eat lunch, you know, breakfast, lunch and dinner. You could hang out. There was common areas for people to, to mingle and just spend social time and kind of make the time pass. So uh, I'm not a, a, a social butterfly by any means, but I think uh, I definitely enjoy being around people. And this is going to be different, you know, to be spending the majority of the time in the hotel room. But like I said, just focusing on the work, being locked in, and make sure you get your rest and recovery and add a different, you know, couple of new things to the routine and, and um, you know, hope it goes good. Great. Thanks very much, Fred. Appreciate it. Have a good day down there. Thanks, there. What's up, Fred? You happy to have me out of your space there now? <laughs> yeah, man. Finally, I go outside again. <laughs> uh, try to figure out which Porsche is yours every day, you know? <laughs> no, no, no Porsche. Um, Sorry, to take it back to DeMar once, I get one, once more, and I, this might be a hard thing to kind of put into words, but with how outspoken and vulnerable he's been throughout the later part of his career in terms of mental health and that kind of, you know, holistic look at, at what your health is like, I know that's something you've talked about before. How important an example is DeMar, I mean, for the Raptors when he was there and for the league as a whole, do you think? He changed the – he changed the – he changed the billion dollar business. He changed it, you know, pretty much single-handedly um, speaking out. And then obviously a lot of guys felt more comfortable and that's what it's about. So uh, for him to do that, it was huge and we won't know the impact. We never know the impact, but we just know that it's a great impact that he had on the league and on the guys and on players, coaches, staff, whoever, that this is, this is DeMar DeRozan and he goes through shit like everybody else. And, um, you know, I think that was big for him. It took, you know, a lot of guts and, and uh, a lot of heart to do that. And um, something that helped me in my personal life, um, feeling comfortable about some of those things. It opened my eyes to things that I was ignorant about. And, um, you know, it was just, I think it was special for him to do that. And I think it's even more important now, you know, during this pandemic, uh, you know, I think people's mental health has kind of been pushed to the side a little bit. So I think it's something that we also focus on a little bit more and um, keep at the forefront of all of our discussions and keeping people, you know, keeping their mental health. Uh, obviously, we got to worry about our physical health with this virus and with all the other things going on, but our mental health is really being affected over these last 12 months and um, something that we should all pay attention to and, and focus on individually and, and collectively. Thanks, Fred. I really appreciate it. Thank you.